Hey, and welcome back to another Tales from the Dark Side review. Look, uh, big week in Star Wars. We're going to do the review for the High Republic Adventures number one. Now listen, for all of you that have seen our reviews before, you gave us tons of great feedbacks. You gave us a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Make sure you do that again. For the rest of you that haven't covered the book yet or haven't seen a review, press pause here, go down, like us, subscribe, hit a little comment in the button, thank us for what we've done, telling you that we're going to spoil everything. Because as the ticker says below, there's going to be lots of spoilers. When I say spoilers, I'm not saying we're just going to give you a little bit here, a little bit there. We're going to show you some panels from the book. We're going to talk about all the characters that are in there. And we're going to spoil the ending for you too. So before we do that, please make sure you've read the book. If not, well, like I said, pause it and come back later. I'm going to go out, get my buddy real quickly, and I'll be right back. Hey, everybody. So we're here to cover Star Wars, The High Republic Adventures. We already told you that there's going to be spoilers, but guess what? I brought my friend Pete around so that he could go over some of the covers. You know he loves artists. So, Pete, could you tell us about this cover real quickly? Yeah, what's going on, everybody? This one, we have the cover A, which is actually done by the interior artist, Harvey Talibau. And uh, it covers three of the Padawan that we meet early, you know, inside this issue. And uh, the three of them are on the cover. The art has been out for a little while now, but now seeing it colored, it, it really pops. So the three of them in the center there on this speeder type uh, vehicle with uh, you know, a pretty cool uh, purple background. I do like how they're adding in the colors of the background. We've also got a little bit of sparkling on the lightsabers. It's really cool what they're doing with the lightsabers in a lot of these books. They're really making them pop. Our next cover, Pete? Yeah, the 1 in 10 retailer incentive on this one is uh, done by Yael Nathan. I don't know if I'm saying her name properly, but this is pretty much just a tough-looking Yoda. Uh, this is a younger Yoda, so he's got a little more hair up top there. He's got a mean look on his face, a pretty cool purple background, which lets that green of his skin and the green of his lightsaber pop off the page. It uh, isn't bad for a 1 in 10. It was a really cool cover. I did see some of those. Be careful. They are having some chipping at the top, it looks like, uh, on a couple of the covers that I saw. But besides that, it, it really does pop. You're right, Pete, with the colors, the blues. I do really like that the purple is something that they're moving to. So we're going to get into it. I know last review, we started off and we went over all the characters at the end. We're going to kind of give you a little oversight of some of the characters that you might see throughout the book before we start getting into some of the inside panels. The main three characters, like Pete said, that was on the cover is Lula, Court, and Farzella. Farzala, maybe? Farzala it is. Thank you, Pete. <laughs> but you also get another Padawan in there just briefly, but does have some interesting points. It's Bips, which you see on the left and has a blue tone to him inside. And then... Finally, we get to see Torban Buck. Why we like Torban Buck is this. He's got an excellent nickname. His nickname is Bucket of Bloods. The author of this book, <laughs> Pete, do you remember who the author of the book is by any chance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The author, uh, Jose Older, told a pretty cool story at the uh, intro of the whole High Republic thing where he told the story about Buckets of Blood, and he, he actually exclaimed it every time. He was, Buckets of Blood! Every time. He did, and it turns out that the Buckets of Blood isn't actually what you think. It's not about him slicing people mall style in half. It actually is a thing that uh, he knew uh, EMT used to say, that they're going to need Buckets of Blood to save the people, something to that effect. Go check it out. It's really cool. You should be watching those little intros by the artist. It's excellent. Uh, there are, are There is another group. So this is the Jedi group. There is another group, and it is these two right here. It's, well, technically three. We're not showing the third one yet. We'll give it to you in a minute. But it's Zen and Crix. Zen is the pink female you see, and Crix is the boy with blonde hair. Obviously, we have said before when we thought uh, the preview art was coming out that Crix was a girl. We were wrong. It's actually a boy. Crix mm. does still have a pretty big part in this book. The third character that you see with these two is this right here. It's Cham Cham. It's kind of like a bat. We haven't decided if it's a pet yet or not. We'll see. I think it might be, you know, almost like a Disney character pet. They like to have it. So if you don't have a droid, you get a pet bad, I guess. Uh, here we go. The main page now they're doing these crawls. Yes, there was a timeline. We skipped that. The gold is so bright that even the little bit, the little bit of light while we were trying to scan these in was shining off of it. Just gives you like the crawl overview. I really do like it. <clears throat> it's really clean. The IDW books do seem to be a little bit better of a quality compared to the Marvel books, mm. which is nice. We get into the first page. When we were doing the reviews originally on the IDW, what we had seen as far as their sample art came out, this was a black and white 
the scans do not do this justice. The color pops off the page. The reds are done very well. We got the subdual type character there too. That is a hole is from the. Sebulba? What's that? Yes, yeah, Sebulba. Sebulba. Yeah, yeah, that is a Sebulba. Whatever, he, whatever he is. The hole opens up from the hyperspace, dropping uh, bits and pieces of ship. That is from the novel uh, when the accident happened over Hetzel Prime. We know that they're continuing that in. It's just one panel. They send out an alert. Oh, and here we go. The <laughs> alert gets a hold of Yoda. And Yoda's got a bunch of Padawans on there. We get to see our first uh, uh, pick of uh, Lula. She All the blue speech there is her inner monologue. She does this whole big inner monologue thing about, you know, I'm trained to be the best Jedi of all time and this, that, the other thing. Yoda's head is pretty big in the third panel. Just that, that one. A, it's not just that one. It gets like that throughout. But <laughs> then in the fourth uh, section or fourth pa panel down, you get to see the other two, Quart and Farzala. Farzala speaks in native tongues or in basics, where Quart speaks in a different language. And it is looks like it's going to have to be translated throughout the book. We will see if that changes, if that's like the Wookiee type situation yeah. with Chewbacca or not. But we'll see. It didn't really affect it that much. The next page, they go and they get into the planet Tarmat, where the pieces of the ship are uh, popped out of hyperdrive and are falling or going to hit this island. And then we start to see into the life of Zine and Crix on this island. They go back and forth. It's This island's interesting because it's occupied by, I don't know, Pete, what would you call it, a cult? Ah, cult has too much of a negative connotation. I'd say more like a commune, maybe. Maybe. We might get back into that a little yeah, bit later, well, further yeah. down into the panels. Um, so they go back and forth. They're trying to run away because they know something bad's happening. Oh, here we go. Buckets of blood. Look at him with all his mass. Very silent, strong type standing behind Yoda. Yoda's giving a little speech about how they're going to save people. And then we get to our first appearance there. The long snout, the blue character yeah. in front of Lula, the short one with the goggles. Team turns out to be our friend Bips, he came out very nicely. She knows something's up. Everybody knows something's up. I will say this, very interesting. They look like they're going in for a battle pose on the next page, but they really aren't. What they're doing is sending a bunch of kids to go save a planet. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be a junior reader book. What's that? They're hyping them up. They're giving them the, you know, the rally, the Braveheart speech. They're you know, rallying the troops. Yeah, it must be nice being up safe up in a ship while you're sending a bunch of kids down to a planet that's getting <laughs> hit by an apocalyptic rain of pieces of ship parts going on it. Either way, they send them out to the vehicles we will show you later. And, but you do get to see the split screen where they're um, where you get both Zine and Lula, and they're doing their inner monologue together. And that does come back up later because even when they were both introduced, they both kind of intro their inner monologues with the "I have a secret." So this mirroring you know, aspect is kind of carried through this whole issue between the two of them. It really is. Um, once again, they go back to the planet. You get to see the pieces fall down in the last panel. We get cham cham again, but in the last panel, we get to see finally the arrival of a Nile ship or Nihil ship. It looks a little <laughs> spidery ish. It looks a little thrown together, but it's pretty cool to finally see one of their ships. If you were reading the novels and such, you had probably your own opinion on what some of these would look like. It's mm -hmm. good to finally actually see one that's not exactly what I thought it was going to look like, but they're all different, so there you go. Then we go over, and what is that? It looks like a car, and there's a whoosh. Very interesting <laughs> type of, of uh, speeder uh, vehicle to for the kids to go and try to get down to the planet in. We then switch back again to uh, Crix and Zine, with, who run up into something. Really cool how they did the pause here because the next page, oh, guess who it is? Mm. It's the Nile. And they're just trying to get to their um, elder there, the main elder. I think that's Crix's elder. Anyways, you get to see uh, the Max Rebo Band type <laughs> character is pink at the bottom, holding hostage the elder. Very cool stuff. I'm telling you, this does not do it justice. The actual book is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful, the artwork they did. We get a closer up look up to the vehicle of the Nile. As you can see, it's very spideristic. Yeah, uh, it's like a big tick. Yeah. And it is the one ship left to get everybody off this planet. 
or island because it's really like an island on the planet. However, the Nile are saying no go. Very interesting <laughs> point at the bottom of this. Originally, if you had uh, seen any of the original art or had seen any of the original dialogue, this Nile character at the bottom says something. Um, it says, good luck with the apocalypse, though. Two interesting points about that. Originally, that line of words was credited to Roe, the leader of the Nile. Obviously, that is not him. Number two, for a kid's quote unquote book or a book in the kids section. Very interesting how they're like, hey, let's throw some kids down on a plant that's about to blow up. Hey, these kids are going to die. By the way, one of these kids, uh, the pink one, Zen, has been uh, abandoned pretty much. And Crix has dragged her around to a cult or as, what did you call it again, Pete? I would say like a commune, but they, a they, commune that does not like Jedi. They think they Jedi are the worst things ever. You should never have any power. If you have power, you should suppress it. Very interesting point here. N interesting fact that they turn that dialogue around to just a regular Nile character. Then they do something unexpected. Also, they give us a map for all you map lovers. Here is a little map. It's got some of the hyperspace lanes that have been charted out already. Down at the bottom, you see the planet that we are currently watching be destroyed, Tarmat. Um, to the left of that is the star beacon, so you can see how close they are. Also to the right, you go back up, you get a little Tatooine, Tatooine. and, and Hetzel, the Hetzel Prime system, which was in the novel. They did put Kashyyyk up here for some reason. These all might have an input. Coruscant obviously is in the middle of it. Um, very interesting map. There you go. I, it, it it's seems like the context when you know the other places you might have heard of before. Yes, but I wonder why they didn't do this in the beginning of the book. It was a little weird doing it towards not even the middle, almost towards the end of the book. Either way, they they use it to do a flashback where you actually see this the, the Zine character and the Cricks meet up with each other. They kind of still talk about how, you know, Zine says if you have force powers, you pretty much have to suppress it because these people don't like it. They also, very interesting uh, line of text again, they talk about elders and acolytes. So the kids are the acolytes mm -hmm. and there's elders and there's no parents. And somehow Zine's elder disappeared and now she kind of shares. Well, I think she feels like Crix is responsible for her well-being because he kind of shared his elder with Zine kind of. I don't know. I think they're going to get into that a little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely a, a different relationship you would assume from this. You know, this commune, whatever cult you want to call them, is yeah. definitely out of the ordinary. And it's just compounded by the fact that she has her little her little secret. That's kind of why I thought it was more cultish, I guess. Either way, they then in the last panel get back to stuff exploding above their heads. Because nothing like shooting stuff at little children. Um, <laughs> and the next page gets into the Jedi who are now on the ground but want to be back up into the air. And have somehow grown very tall and are like ready to go. Yeah, that's not Panthro. That's definitely not Panthro. That's I will tell Yeah, I mean, hey, it is what it is. The next page we go back to, because they keep flipping back and forth. They, Zine and Crix are really pushy about, hey, we got to get in there. The elder says, they're my students. Let them through. They should be with me. Even though they are said that the he told us only to take the elder, whatever. The Jedi are here. They're about to get in the fight. Oh my gosh, look the shock and awe on Zine and Crix's face. They've never even mm -hmm. seen the Jedi. What is going to happen? Oh, well, the Nile are ready. This is a very interesting point. The Nile at this point, it has been so far in after the effects of the novel that they are very well versed, it appears, with the Jedi, would you say, Pete? Yeah, I, I would say they are, are pretty, you know, pretty well informed, you know, for a pirate group. Yeah, of who they are, pretty well organized. They start shooting. The whole group starts shooting. And there's a lot of them. And the Jedi are pushing them back and forth. We have Zine peeking out, seeing this go on. And these are Padawans, too, by the way. Yeah, but very, yeah, very good Padawans. They do the split screen. Something weird. You see, like, the shot, but then they did, like, an arrows with the shot to show the force. So then it all clicks for Zine. But in the very last, last tenth of a page panel, you see a piece falling and Zine freaking out she tries to use the force but can't do it 
Crix is also like, oh my gosh, it's going to hit us. Then we get Lola there. Hey, buddy, let's help each other out. This was very kitty right here. The rest of the book really wasn't. They were almost it. mind melding at the panel before where the, you know, their, the internal monologue was blending between the pinks and the blues. Like, it was. It really was. Sharing a mind. Yeah, absolutely. On this page. Yep. Then we get the final panel, which has a lot to do. Right here, we see Crix, and Crix is mad. He's like, oh, you betrayed me. You had all these powers, and you suppressed them. It yeah, reminds me. anime, mad. Look at those eyes. It is. It reminds me a lot of uh, Jedi vs. Sith, the Dark Horse book. And they had Bug was a character in there, and you have to go read that to read it. Really does remind me of that character and that tone, which is interesting because I think that, even though it was very dark also and people were losing hands, was tailored towards younger kids which you should never tailor a story about Darth Bane towards younger kids, but that's not me. <laughs> um, and in the last panel, the half page, we get to see who we think is a very, very important character. We believe that that character saying kill them all is Marshan Rowe. We do know that the top is supposed to usually light up red and that it was only the concept work on the right, but the blaster lines up, the cape lines up, the body movement lines up. And he's commanding the nil. And it may he's, not be glowing, but you still kind of see that eye kind of. And he is the eye. So he is the I eye. I think it's got to be him. Right underneath that is Crix 2, uh, which is very interesting for the future. We do think it's still going down that road where Crix is going to join the, the Nile or Ni Hill. Um, mm -hmm. And this sure seems to be like that that's going to be the case. They have not come out with a cover two officially yet as of the time that we are shooting this video, which is on Wednesday, the day the book came out. However, they do have this at the end of the book. We do think that there is a very high likelihood that this will be the cover of two. Uh, yeah, it's probably a for a cover. It is. The B cover or the one in 10 RI cover, we know if it stays the same is going to be buckets of blood driving one of those sports yeah. cars. Um, also a very cool and interesting cover. Pete, we rank these from one to five lightsabers. If you could give us a little bit of an overview, you could tell us your thoughts. We'd appreciate it to hear what you thought of this book and what was your ranking overall on it? Yeah, sure. I mean, for me, I mean, I might be more forgiving than most when it comes to Star Wars. I mean, but I still thought this was a solid four. Uh, I mean, it was a good introductory issue. I liked how they did that kind of mirroring effect of following you know, the Padawan and her concerns with the... Uh, you know, Zine, who was hiding her abilities down on the planet and kind of connecting the two uh, by the time the story ended. And I felt like we got a good introduction to a bunch of these new characters that we're getting. We got the Nihil showing how, you know, how formidable that they could be. And we might have gotten our first appearance of Marshan Rowe, who, if you read the book, you absolutely have to be in love with this character because I, at the very least, was by the time the book ended. So I don't know. I, I was definitely on... Uh, on with a four there were a bit of wonky bits you know with some of the interior art as you pointed out a big yoda head or two now and then but other than that the art was fantastic and the coloring and the paper quality this is uh definitely definitely worth picking up so i'm going solid four that's great to hear pete I i'm actually i'm happy with that too and i've talked to a couple other people everybody that i know who's picked it up is pretty happy with this book and when I was reading it the first time through i was like wow you know what there's something that seems familiar about this book what could it possibly be? And kind of like I said earlier about the Jedi and Sith book, then I remembered what it was. This takes it back kind of to a time when Dark Horse was doing similar type of books. It does remind me a lot of that style of books. Mm -hmm. The artwork, although wonky sometimes, the color was really good. And I do remember when I was younger and those Dark Horse books were coming out that the actual artwork was pretty good for the times. Now, when you look back, you're like, eh, some of it was a little, a little wonky, as you say. But with that being said, it was still very well done. The story was also told between the verbiage that they used on the page and the actual artwork. This book accomplishes that. You're right. The quality of these books, it's nice to see Star Wars in a quality that's maybe a little bit better than the Marvel quality paper that they yeah. use. It really is. And the colors, although the scans we keep saying didn't do it justice, please, and down below, tell us if you think that the colors didn't pop as well or the artwork isn't done as well, because I think you might be hard-pressed to do that. It is very impressive the actual artwork that came out of this book i was intrigued with each page my eye was caught on it overall i'm also giving it a four they gave us a bunch of new characters they made them relevant even at bit the little blue character <laughs> had a cool line in that book 
where he's like, uh, maybe we should have asked nicely first to the Nile before pulling out <laughs> lightsabers, which was pretty funny because it plays well later. They, they weren't too jokey with it. They, everything seemed, I know it's not realistic, but everything seemed to fit in the storyline. It didn't seem like they overexerted any of the characters. All the reactions seemed like those reactions should have taken place in that. And yeah, if you know me, you know that I like Marshawn Rowe. I think he is a bad of the ages. Like he is what bad guys are supposed to be. And I sure hope that that was him. Yeah, um, definitely. That's all I got right now. We will do another review probably on two. Pete, do you have anything else to add? No, I just got to quickly just say, even though it's a kid's book, it's not a kitty book. Mm, very good. Very good. All right, there we go. Two fours for this book. I hope you all enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up and may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>